a pleasant day and a favorable study time to everybody. This is your pre-recorded uh, presentation of your module 16, which is mainly presentations of your cytologic techniques under your histopath laboratory. When we say diagnostic cytology class, this is the microscopic examination or evaluation of the cells or cellular constituents from the different body sites for diagnostic purposes. So cytologic examination is divided into two categories. We have your uh, exfoliative cytology and as well as the fine needle aspiration. So when we say exfoliative cytology, it deals with the microscopic uh, examination or evaluation of the shed, the descommitted cells from the body surfaces or the cellular constituents or the cells that have been or that were harvested via rubbing, brushing, or um, yes, rubbing and brushing of the epithelial cell surfaces. While fine needle aspiration is a procedure that utilizes a thin needle which is inserted into an area of an abnormal appearing tissue or body fluid. As with the other types of biopsies class, the sample collected can help create a diagnosis and can rule out conditions such as cancer. Exfoliative cytology. So it basically refers to exfoliated cells. And this exfoliated cells class may be found in smears, that have been spontaneously shed or physically removed from the epithelial and mucous membranes. So it is also called as uh, descommitted cells, which are uh, mainly the cells that are shed or removed from the epithelial cells uh, surface. The goal actually, okay, we have different goals of your uh, exfoliative cytology. It includes number one, to detect the malignancy or cancerous conditions. And this is mainly utilized or primarily utilized uh, for staging cancer. Number two, to detect asymptomatic or precancerous cervical lesions that is uh, most particularly in women. Number three, to assess ovarian function or female hormonal status in case of sterility, what else, endocrine disorders. And this is achieved via microscopic evaluation or examination for the determination of the maturation index or your MI, which is actually based on the examination of smears taken from the lateral vaginal walls. Number four is to determine the genetic sex. So most of the nuclei of females exhibit conglomeration of the chromatin, which represents XX chromosome or what we call as the bar body, which may be demonstrated in the smears from the buccal cavity or a vaginal mucosa. Number five is to detect possible infection or determine etiology of certain uh, infections or disease states such as sexually transmitted infections or diseases. And lastly, class, one of the main goal of exfoliative cytology is for medical legal examination, most primarily for sexual assault patients and rape cases. A, the techniques applied in cytology for these samples. Uh, okay, these samples may be the smear technique and cell block technique. So these are the specimens for examination under exfoliative cytology. Number one is peritoneal, uh, pericardial, and pleural fluids, which are your um, uh, your uh, extra interstitial ex interstitial fluids number two is your uh, cerebrospinal fluid your nipple discharge uh, bronchial brushing or washing sputum gastric washing urine sediments uh, the prostatic secretions and your cervical vaginal smears which is the most commonly utilized for this uh, procedure so class uh, once again the techniques that are commonly applied in cytology for these samples presented here 
are the uh, smear technique and your cell block technique. So when we say cell block technique class, okay, a recall, it is also considered as microbiopsy and it uses um, cell block in exfoliative cytology. And these are, uh, okay, under cell, cell block class, cell block technique, these are also applied in architectural uh, evaluation of the cells, uh, as to categorizing uh, tumors, and it is also used for special staining and histochemistry, and also archival uh, of specimen for future studies. But uh, okay, class. But let's uh, for now let's focus on the smear technique. So moving on, we have smear technique, exfoliative cytology. Okay, okay, class. This. Uh, Itemized here are objective and easy to apprehend. So uh, let us uh, read them one by one. So we have A, smears should be made from fresh material. And smears must be prepared in doctor's office or radiology units. And this is actually to prevent adulteration of samples. Uh, C, label on the requisition form should include the patient's name, of course, the agent date and type of the specimen. Letter D, the label on the slide should include the patient's ID and the laboratory identifying number, and which is preferably on the frosted end slide with printed label or with a diamond pen. So uh, histotechnicians class sometimes perform special stains on cytology, uh, cytologic smears and blood, uh, blood films and cytopreps from other departments within the laboratory. So increasingly, the commonly received uh, cytoprep is that of the thin prep or thin preparation. Okay, class, these smears are um, actually wet fixed in a 95% ethyl alcohol or ethanol, which is performed immediately right after preparation to preserve the fine structures of the chromatin and help in the evaluation of the nuclear changes. So air drying is avoided with uh, smears for cytological detection of neoplasia because it changes the appearances of the cells. However, slides bearing blood or um, what else, bone marrow smears are usually air dried. So take note of that class. Okay, moving on, marrow smears are actually stained in parallel to sections of the bone marrow core biopsy. And okay, class, a recall from your uh, methods of spearing. We have streaking, spreading. We have also pull apart and touch preparations or Im impression uh, smears. So when we say streaking, it is created by a direct zigzag line throughout the slide. When we say spreading, it is created when specimen is applied and spread by teasing using an applicator stick. Number three is your pull apart, which is um, a procedure wherein the specimen is pressed or, uh, sorry, spread evenly on the surface of two slides, mainly for thick secretions. And your touch preparations, or also known as your impression smears, are created when the slide is made to touch or pressed on the surface of a freshly cut piece of tissue sample or tissue specimen. Okay, we have here adhesives. Number one, pulled human sera or plasma. We also have celloidin, ether, alcohol, or leucosando culture, and your APES or aminopropyl trietoxysilin. So, class tissue smear adhesive agents are applied as uh, some samples collected or easily uh, washed out during the processing. So, specimens that require as adhesive agents, we have um, urinary sediments, your bronchial lavage specimen, what else your uh, specimens that uses uh, proteolytic enzymes during processing. So the characteristics of a good ad adhesive agent is number one, must be permeable to both fixative and the stain and must uh, not retain when, st when stained. So the good adhesives for adhesives for cytologic techniques are your pulled human sera or plasma, okay, your number two, number three, and number four. So these are your examples of the good adhesives that are mainly 
utilized and mo most frequently utilized in cytologic techniques. Your polyhuman sera or plasma, saloidin ether, alcohol, and so on. Okay, next we have uh, fixation uh, precautions. So these are a few of the precautions that are included in our reference textbook. So for your cross-reference, uh, kindly visit your uh, book of uh, Bruce Gregorius. So letter A, uh, prepared smears must be immersed in or sprayed with a fixative immediately while still moist before drying. So smears for cytological detection of neoplasia must avoid air drying, as I have mentioned a while ago, because it changes the appearance of the cells. These slides, while uh, these slides uh, bearing blood or bone marrow smears are usually uh, air dried, so the same as I have mentioned a while ago. So class D fixation time uh, must be within uh, 10 to 15 minutes, which is the minimum uh, fixation time required for samples. So letter B, we have exfoliated cells decompose and dries rapidly. Uh, resulting in destroyed cellular and nuclear details. Well, of course, with the exemption of your smear, smears for cytological detection of ne neoplasia. So C, fluid specimen must be centrifuge at 2000 RPM for 2 minutes. The supernatant of the fluid is the content and the sediment may be directly smeared onto the glass slides. And if using cytocentrifuge, Smears uh, may be directly made on the coated slides with a thin film of egg albumin. So, class, your egg albumin is uh, primarily utilized to uh, promote or enhance the adhesion of the specimen or the uh, tissue specimen on the uh, glass slide surface. And number uh, letter F, extra sediment may uh, be used for cell block, which is similar to histologic biopsy material. So these are the precautions during fixation. So identify the uh, slides before preparing smears to prevent, uh, well, of course, to prevent specimen switching and so on. Letter B, attach a paper clip to the identified end of the slide before preparing the smear. And letter C, smears should be immersed in the fixative after preparations. Letter D, place each smear in fixative uh, by a single uninterrupted motion to avoid rippling of the smear. And letter E, lastly, avoid striking the bottom of the fixative container forcefully to uh, prevent the dislodging, uh, to prevent dislodging the material from the slide. A glass, these are the most common fixatives utilized uh, under these uh, cytologic techniques. So equal parts of 95% ethanol or ethyl alcohol and ether, which is the actually the best but expensive and highly flammable uh, form of uh, fixative. Number two is 95% ethyl alcohol, which is uh, most commonly used. Uh, we ha also have car noise fluid and we also have equal parts of tertiary butyl alcohol and one part of 95% et ethyl alcohol. We also have Chudin's fluid, which is a saturated aqueous uh, solution of pure mercury chloride and absolute acetic acid. We also have methanol, which is um, commonly or mainly utilized for blood film preparations. Number seven is Sacomano preservative, which is a combination of 50% alcohol and carbon wax. And lastly, we have number eight, which is spray fixatives. We, uh, it must be uh, sprayed from about a foot distance from the smear. Okay, this is actually performed or this is uh, one foot distance is required because the pressure of the spray uh, fixative may uh, uh, dislodge the the tissue sample on the uh, glass slide. Moving on with staining, we have um, George Papa Nicolau or George Nicholas Papa Nicolau, who, while examining vaginal secretions from animal subject, uh, specifically rodents and and human uh, subject, in an effort to correlate or compare the cellular patterns with sexual cycle, had developed a staining method. 
So the Papa Nicolau staining method identifies the stages in the maturation of the exfoliated squamous epithelial cells and in effect was able to formulate a method with which uh, malignant cells could be identified. So this is now called as your PAPS stain or your PAPS smear. We have advantages and disadvantages of the PAPS stain. So number one of the advantage is the transparent blue staining of cytoplasm is achieved allowing the overlapping cells to be seen and identified under the microscopic uh, examination or evaluation it is an egg number two is an excellent uh, nuclear staining number three the color range is predictable and of uh, great value in identification of cells number four it allows uh, comparing cellular appearance in smears with their uh, counterpart in similarly stained sections on while uh, or however the disadvantages class we have uh, number one long procedure and a very complex a complicated uh, technique procedure and number two is the accuracy of acidophilic index is not uh, achieved so this is all about your staining and uh, Papa Nicolau uh, staining method. So stains for PAPS, we have hematoxylin, which stains nuclear material. We also have OG6 stain, which is used to stain cytoplasm and has a strong affinity for mature cells. And number three, we have EA50 stain, uh, a stain that has a strong affinity for immature cells. So, okay, class, um, take note of these differences of the three uh, stains used for PAP staining. So, class, uh, your EA50 is actually comparable to EA36, and your EA65 differs from EA50 or EA36 only with respect to its uh, concentration of the light green stock solution. These are the results or expected results from the PAP staining. We have the nucleus or vesicular nucleus and pignotic nucleus. Your vesicular nucleus will uh, stain blue while your pignotic nucleus will, will stain dark blue to black. Okay, or in your cytoplasm uh, using OG6, uh, the cytoplasm will appear orange with a hint of green. And when using EA36 to 50, uh, the cytoplasm will appear as olive green with a hint of a brown and red. So other uh, constituents or um, cellular, cellular and non-cellular cellular constituents that are stained from staining, we have bacteria, mycelia, and of course, a pathologic agent, Trichomonas vaginalis. So when performing the pap staining, the bacteria will stain dark blue. The mycelia will stain violet and your uh, pathogenic parasite uh, trichomonas vaginalis will stain as pale greenish blue uh, blob of cytoplasm okay this is your papa nicolaus staining procedure of course number one fixation via 95 percent ethyl alcohol of number two is hematoxylin staining number three is differentiate with um, acid alcohol when washed with water, ammonia water then wash, and then number five is OG6 staining, number six is 95% ethyl alcohol washing. Uh, in two changes of uh, the 95% ethyl alcohol, number seven EA50 or 36, and preceded by dehydration and xylol solution and demounting and labeling so these are the um uh, most basic um most basic uh, stages in the staining procedure so i repeat fixation with 95 percent ethyl alcohol and then hematoxylin staining and then differentiation with uh, acid alcohol and then washed with water and then ammonia water and then another washing and then og6 uh, staining uh, afterwards we have 95 percent uh, ethyl alcohol again uh, washing and we will perform two changes of the ethyl alcohol and then uh, proceeded by EA50 or 36. Afterwards, dehydration and the silo solution uh, and then uh, the mounting and labeling.
So for a more detailed um, discussion or presentation of this streaming procedures, kindly refer to your uh, Bruce Gregorius uh, book. Okay, these are the specimens for exfoliative cytology uh, that are uh, utilized primarily in gynecological and non-gynecological um, um, diagnosis, diagnostics. Okay, gynecological specimens. So these are anatomic sites for uh, gynecological cytologic specimens or these are the uh, anatomical uh, portions or regions of the body uh, most uh, primarily for performed on women uh, patients or uh, yes, women patients. So we have upper which is the proximal third of the vag vaginal wall, the ectocervix, and the endocervix. So uh, on the upper proximal or third of the vaginal wall, it is the ideal for studying the hormonal status, the evaluation of inflammatory conditions, and the classification of the normal flora, and also, lastly, the rarely detection of malignant vaginal lesions that can be caused via um, via uh, sexual diseases or via ex extreme sexual contact and whatsoever or i'm sorry and so on so number two ectocervix is the most common uh, uh, site for cancer screening it uses iris spatula that can reach the uh, transition zone where most of the malignant cells arise so histological morphology is simple uh, squamous epithelium so number three is endocervix for detection of the endocervical uh, lesions, intrauterine lesions, and this is the uh, region for where the columnar epithelium is uh, predominantly found. So class, on your pap smear preparations, the patient should not have been doubts or undergone vaginal exam for at least one to two days or ten days after the last a uh, menstrual period and uh, the gloves to be used by the examiner should have no lubricant or powder so the smear should be prepared thinly in a rotating motion instead of pull apart so remember those uh, few pointers so we are still on gynecological specimens these are the uh, spe uh, specimen collection uh, procedures and the equipment used for gynecological aspirations. We have number one, which is the endocervical brush. This is recommended for um, endocervical canal. Number two is vaginal scrape. It is recommended for patients who have undergone hysterectomy. And lateral vaginal scrape is recommended for hormonal activity assessment. Number four is your um, four-quadrant vaginal scrape. This is recommended naman for localization of vaginal adenosis. So take note of that class. Four-quadrant vaginal scrape for uh, the localization of vaginal adenosis. Number five is a vulval scrape. Vulvar scrape. It is recommended for the detection of herpetic lesions or carcinoma. So when we say herpetic lesions, these are mainly caused by her. Uh, human herpes uh, viruses, which is a sexually transmitted disease. So these are the equipment used for gynecological aspirations. Uh, we have glass uh, pipette and rubber bulb, which measures from 6 to 8 inches by 1, uh, one fourth inches. We also have iris spatula, which is uh, one of the most important equipment used for gynecological aspirations, which is on the, we will be, uh, uh, presenting uh, uh, in just a moment. Uh, this is used for uh, swab uh, smearing. Letter C, laryngeal cannula, which is attached to a 10, uh, 10 cc or 10 milliliter syringe, endocervical or endometrial aspiration. Okay, your laryngeal cannula is attached to a syringe, which is primarily used for aspiration on the endocervical and endometrial um, uh, regions. So letter D is antiseptic, which is used um, a, with uh, benzalkonium chloride or zephyram.
Okay, class, this is the iris spatula that we are uh, uh, using when performing uh, the uh, mentioned uh, diagnostic or cytologic uh, procedure. So, still under gynecological uh, specimens, your hormonal cytology makes use of gynecological specimens, of course. In hormonal cytology class, the assessment is based on the specific response of the vaginal epithelium to steroid hormones. So, we have steroid hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and so on. So, first is estrogen. Uh, we all know that your estrogen or we have learned from our uh, basic endocrinology or biology that estrogen is hormone that is produced mainly by proliferating granulose theca cells of the ovarian follicles that influences the superficial cells. While the progesterone uh, is a form hormone uh, that is produced by the corpus lute luteum that is formed primarily after the ovulation that influences the intermediate cells. So take note of the differences class when estrogen is a hormone that influences the superficial cells while progesterone is a hormone that influences the intermediate cells. So the, uh, we have specimen informations that are equally important for the hormonal cytology. We have uh, vaginal smears are uh, relatively inexpensive. Vaginal smears may be taken regularly and often without injuries, even in pregnant women. So it is also applicable procedure for uh, pregnant women. We also have next is hormonal changes are actually best uh, evaluated in the upper lateral third of the vaginal wall. And the upper lateral third of the vaginal wall is actually more accessible and is less likely to be contaminated, contaminated by cellular debris or vaginal discharges. Okay, this is a nice illustration of a pap test. So as you can notice class, the physician inserted a device or a tool on the uh, vaginal canal. And this is used to widen the vaginal canal so the device or the tool used is known as the speculum which is uh, basically inserted into the vagina to widen it up and then a brush is inserted into the vagina to collect cells from the cervix and the cells that have been collected are tr directly transferred into a glass slide and is used or utilized for further evaluation or microscopic examination for the signs or the presence of disease states such as uh, sexually transmitted diseases and so on. So for the few of the following slides, I will be presenting you with the different cells that are found in the uh, cervicovaginal smears or pap smears. So number one, we have superficial cells. And these are the most mature polygonal squamous epithelial cells, or also known as polyhedral flat cells. And they measure 45 to 50 micrometers, having a pale pink staining cytoplasm and uh, a nucleus that appears to be dark pignotic and measures usually 6 micrometers. So when we talk about superficial cells class, we uh, should also uh, take note and remember about uh, the two uh, different uh, important terminologies referring to superficial cells. We have the true acidophilia and pseudoacidophilia. So when we say true acidophilia, this is the characteristic of a superficial cells that have undergone via estrogen influence. However, this is not a reliable index of the maturation. And when we say pseudoacidophilia, it is observed primarily uh, due to the drying of smears before the fixation procedure or the prolapse and drying of the vaginal epithelium that may be due to uh, infection or chemicals. So the illustration uh, presented here in our particular slide is a cervicovaginal smear showing mature super, uh, superficial cells with abundant pink cytoplasm. So as you can notice, there is also the presence of a few uh, basophilic cells that are slightly large, uh, that are uh, evident with a slightly larger 
nucleus. Next, we have intermediate cells. These are polyhedral or elongated cells. Okay, take note of the key term, elongated polyhedral cells. And they measure 20 to 30 micrometers, having basophilic uh, with vacuums um, that can be seen on the cytoplasm and the nuclei uh, as vesicular that measures about 6 to 9 micrometers. So your intermediate cells class can be categorized further into navicular cells or pregnancy cells. So when we say navicular cells uh, and pregnancy cells, these are both shaped cells. And uh, however, on your uh, navicular cells, it has the strong uh, tendency to uh, fold or curl to edges. And the appearance of the navicular cells class is suggestive of a combined estrogen and progesterone effect. It is found in the latter half of the menstrual cycle uh, during pregnancy and menopausal periods and may also be seen as a result of the abnormal androgen stimulation as either endogenous or exogenous. When we talk about pregnancy cells, these are round oval or boat shaped cells with double cell wall appearance. Okay, that is one key term to a differentiate pregnancy cells to navicular cells. Your pregnancy cells uh, demonstrates a double cell wall appearance. It uh, shows a translucent uh, uh, basophilic cytoplasm that uh, can be commonly observed. Uh, greatest at the center of the cell and this is due to the uh, um, glycogen accumulation. So uh, number three we have parabasal cells which are immature round cells or immature round to oval cells and that, uh, that are frequently termed as sunny side up or fried egg appearance and these uh, parabasal cells class are smaller than intermediate cells measuring from 15 to 30 micrometers with a strongly basophilic cytoplasm with a larger vesicular nucleus. So it can be uh, noticed on the illustration provided here on the particular slide that the nuclei or the nucleus is larger. Okay, class your uh, parabasal cells uh, the larger vesicular nuclei, to be specific, is normally found from the two weeks of age to the puberty stage or periods after the childbirth with abortions or miscarriages and after menopausal or the postmenopausal periods. So when we talk about basal cells class, this is round to slightly oval cells that measures 13 to 20 micrometers, having strong, uh, strongly basophilic cytoplasm and a uh, largely, uh, relatively large uh, nucleus that occupies almost half or more of the cell volume. And it is found mainly on vaginal smears uh, before pregnancy and after menopausal periods. So take note class that basal bodies or basal cells are found only in vaginal smears before pregnancy and after menopausal periods. Next we have endometrial cells which are epithelial cells that are found during menstruation and when we say in groups they appear in clusters of uh, or aggregates of uh, epithelial cells and however in, when um, examined uh, 1 to 10 days after menstruation they will appear as single epithelial cells or unclustered cells and they uh, appear to be small and slightly cylindrical epithelial cells uh, they have a cytoplasm that is uh, basophilic and may be evacuated with small nucleus and uh, that are stained or shows a staining characteristic of um, moderately dark nucleus. Okay, other normal cells that may be seen in a pap smear, we have endocervical cells. Okay, these are slightly cylindrical columnar epithelial cells and they are characteristic of honeycomb appearance. 
So the uh, cytoplasm of endocervical cells are deeply basophilic than that of the parabasal cells, and they are mucin-filled and finely vacuolated. Uh, as to the nuclei, they are basal, uh, basally oriented and uh, with the presence of finely granular chromatin structures. Okay, we are still on the other normal cells and constituents that may be seen in a cervical vaginal smear. So we have here the Derlin bacilli or also uh, known as your lactobacillus acidophilus which is actually a uh, beneficial bacteria of the uh, vagina. So this bacteria are gram-positive and slender rod bacteria which are characterized by being gram-variable. They are the predominant bacteria or microorganism of the vaginal canal and the vaginal uh, normal microbiota that establishes the low pH or the acidic pH of the vagina or the female vagina that actually inhibits the growth of pathogenic microorganisms. So that is why they are beneficial or good bacteria of the vaginal uh, normal microbiota. And uh, under cervicovaginal smears, they will appear as uh, pale blue to lavender and are numerous in the luteal phase and during pregnancy. Next, we have neutrophils, which are you know, basically type of a white blood cell that normally increases right, uh, right just before, during, and shortly after the menstrual cycle of, uh, the, of women. Next, we have RBCs or the red blood cells. These are uh, the cells seen on the traumatic collection. And of course, it is very evident during menstruation or menstrual, menstrual cycle. Next, we have leptotrix species. So these are long, thin filamentous bacilli that are increased in uh, the presence or number in high vaginal pH. And they are suggestive of uh, infections or risk of infections. Letter G, we have contaminant, which is talcum powder. Okay, your talcum powder will appear or demonstrate or will exhibit as ovoid bodies when stained under your pap smears or cervicovaginal smearing. Okay, moving on with the abnormal cellular components or constituents that may be seen in a cervicovaginal smears or pap smears. So we have here first is candida albicans, which is one of the most common and uh, the most remarkable uh, kind of uh, fungi or fungus. So this is a body yeast that is seen in uh, or commonly seen in diabetic patients or patients with uh, in immunocompromised immune system or patients with uh, STDs or HIV AIDS and patients under the oral uh, contraceptives or patients with prolonged uh, use of steroid. So your cervical vaginal smears, smears class can be suggestive of a fungal infection when there is see, uh, an evident uh, presence of a thick cottage cheese discharge when there is a formation of eosinophilic uh, bodies and pseudohyphae and hyphae which is uh, mainly characterized by spaghetti and meatballs appearance and that are often tangled or skewering squamous cells or epithelial cells that can have variable associated inflammation or inflammatory halos and okay these are uh, mainly uh, suggestive of a fungal infection and the treatment is usually uh, provided when the uh, aforementioned are seen under the cervicovaginal smears or pap smears. Next we have trichomonas vaginalis. So this is actually a recall from your parasitology lecture. Your trichomonas vaginalis or T. vaginalis is a sexually transmitted parasite that appears to be a pear-shaped or a single-celled parasite or microorganism with granular cytoplasm and an eccentric dark nucleus. So class, uh, this is uh, mainly seen on patients uh, severely infected with 
uh, trichomoniasis or uh, sexual transmitted uh, infections. Next, we have G. vaginalis or Gardnerella vaginalis. This is a tiny pleomorphic oxobacilli that has a, a very high tendency to cling to cytoplasm of epithelial cells, which are blue cells. So G. vaginalis is the causative agent or the biologic agent of the bacterial vaginosis. So when we say closed cells class, these are squamous epithelial cells that are covered with uh, shaggy bacilli and mixed form of bacteria rather than the normal microbiota, lactobacillus, uh, acidoph uh, lactobacilli, acidophilus. So when a sample is uh, submitted uh, or a vaginal discharge is submitted in the laboratory that demonstrates a thick milky vaginal discharge with a foul uh, fish odor that is already suggestive of G. vaginalis or bacterial vaginosis. Next, we have coilocytes. These are squamous epithelial cells that often show cytopathic effects on the human papilloma virus or your HPV. This is the diagnosis marker of a low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Uh, okay, as you can notice, the nucleus here uh, exhibits a wrinkled prone appearance with perinuclear halo that is suggestive of your uh, coilocytes. Okay, we have a uh, herpes simplex virus or HSV2. Okay, it shows a cytopathic uh, effect of cell characterized as uh, macrosomia, uh, multinucleation, uh, nuclear molding, and ground glass chromatin pattern. We also have cancerous lesions or carcinomas that are of epithelial origin. And these plastic cells, we also have invasive uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, class, this is the uh, simplified version of the manner of reporting of pap smears. So this is, however, this is no longer used since December 1988. So for uh, academic purposes only class, I will be presenting you with the uh, classes and the class systems. So class 1 is the negative for malignant cells. Class 2, atypical cells present but negative for malignancy. So when we say class 3, this is suspicious of malignant cells. Class 4, strongly suggestive of uh, malignant cells. And class 5, conclusive of malignant cells. Number two is BITIS the system, which is the uh, currently used uh, grading system or reporting system for pap smears, which is developed by uh, the National Cancer Institute in December 1988, the same year uh, when the class system is no longer uh, utilized as a manner of reporting for pap smears. A class, the BITES, the system report format, we have the specimen adequacy, dissatisfactory, uh, limited, and satisfactory. So the general uh, categorization, we have negative for intraepithelial lesions or malignant cell, epithelial cell abnormality, uh, benign cellular changes, infections or radiation effects, the atypical squamous cells of known significance, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. We also have high-grade squamous uh, intraepithelial lesions, squamous cell carcinoma, also glandular cell abnormality, atypical glandular cell, adenocarcinomas, and others to name a few. So for a more detailed uh, presentation, kindly visit your Bruce Gregorius. Okay, class, we have next the non-gynecological specimens or specimens that are not uh, defini uh, descriptive or specific for uh, female patients. We have first respiratory tract specimens, which includes uh, sputum, uh, bronchoalveolar lavage, bronchial washing, and bronchial brushings. So as for the 
a principle for the respiratory tract specimens class. This is primarily utilized to exclude the possibility of the malignancy or infectious agents such as pneumocystis hirovechi that is formerly called as your pneumocystis carinae that are um, commonly or most frequently and evidently and remarkably seen uh, from uh, immunocompromised uh, patients such as uh, patients with HIV AIDS infection. So as for the collection and preparation for uh, sputum, we should uh, collect an early early morning specimen or an early um, morning sputum by deep cough or an expectorated sputum in a wide-mouthed jar containing your saccomano fluid. So when using sputum as a specimen, uh, the required uh, specimen, number of specimen is at least three consecutive morning sputum specimens and the presence of the alveolar macrophages denotes the satisfactory sputum samples. So for sputum samples class, we are or we should make two smears for each of the patients. So for bronchial aspirates, the secretion obtained at bronchoscopy are collected either by aspiration into a glass uh, suction apparatus or by washing the bronchi with 1 to 2 uh, cc of uh, normal saline solution into a cup uh, if sufficient in amount and sent it uh, directly or immediately to the laboratory for the preparation and examination. Next, we have the uh, bronchial washing which are freshly collected in the uh, bronchoscopy collection container and um, delivered to the laboratory for examination next we have uh, bronchial brushing <clears throat> okay this is directly smeared onto two labeled slides by pool preparation and usually done by bronchoscopic specialists at the bronchoscopy laboratory so this is uh, uh, more commonly uh, performed uh, by the uh, bronchoscopic uh, specialist. And then the slide uh, where the uh, bronchoscopic uh, specialist uh, placed or spread the sample was sprayed or is sprayed directly with a fixative or 95% ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Okay, number two, we have gastric secretions and aspirates. So the principle for this um, aspirate is to exclude the possibility of malignant tumors. So for the collection and preparation of gastric secretions and aspirates, it follows uh, basically the general format of uh, respiratory specimen collection, such as the washing and brushing of specimens, and uh, however, this is quite difficult to prepare and this is collected via simple irrigation and aspiration technique. So in this kind of uh, aspiration, sample aspiration, the patient should have uh, fasted for at least eight hours before the gastric washing is performed. And then the specimen should be examined as soon as possible since any delay of uh, more than uh, 30 minutes uh, before the fixation will digest the cells and make the specimen unsatisfactory for microscopic evaluation. So we have next your interstitial fluids such as peritoneal, pleural, and pericardial fluids. These uh, samples class are utilized for the detection of the presence of malignant cells, which is indicative of metastatic involvement. So it means, therefore, that these samples are used uh, to diagnose for a, a higher stage of cancer. So this is processed, or these uh, samples are uh, basically processed the same way as bronchial secretions and the jelly-like clots forming after collection may be prevented by addition of 300 units of heparin and anticoagulant uh, per 100 ml of aspirate so the heparinized collection containers are uh, often or frequently used in order to um, rule out the um, the constitution of uh, 300 units of heparin per 100 ml of aspirate. So instead of uh, performing this kind of uh, addition 
of the heparin units, we can directly utilize a heparinized collection containers already. Next, we have breast secretions. Uh, this kind of sample class is um, a low uh, diagnostic yield for the diagnosis of breast carcinoma and discharges from the nipple except during lactation and the post-lactation per periods are abnormal and may be uh, due to benign breast lesions such as ducta extasia and papilloma or endocrine problems. And however, the, blood, the presence of a bloody secretion should be considered clinically for benign intraductal papilloma. This is the uh, simplified version of the collection and preparation of uh, breast secretion sample. Number one, gently strip the subareolar area and the nipple using the thumb and the forefinger. And then place the label slide upon the nipple and draw it quickly across the nipple. However, if more than a drop is collected, use another slide to smear, uh, smear up with a pull-up technique or pull-up preparation. Number three, immediately drop slide in a bottle of 95% isopropanol or use um, spray fixative. Number four, secretions obtained from both breasts should be properly identified as left or right. So that is a very imperative class to um, uh, label the slides as to whether the uh, sample or the breast secretion is obtained or um, gathered or collected from the left breast or the right breast and next number five we have urinary tract specimens this uh, includes avoided urine or the first morning urine uh, catheterized specimen also we can also use washings from the bladder or the renal pelvis so class this is primarily utilized for the diagnosis of malignancy usually of urothelial origin However, it provides a low diagnostic yield due to the possibility of the cells to detach during the fixation. So, urine tract specimen collection and preparation. Uh, the second urine is uh, preferred and the first void urine should be discarded due to the overnight degeneration of the cellular constituents. So, two samples is uh, required, one early morning and one later in the day, at least 50 ml, and they should be um, centrifuge. And uh, th these uh, sediments are immediately sent to the laboratory. Uh, refrigerated, uh, uh, the urine must be ref refrigerated if there is a delay in the uh, processing that is um, um, anticipated and using of any preservatives is not recommended. So similar for the urinary sediment class, for male patients, voided urine is the required um, specimen. For female patients, the catheterized specimen can be utilized or is recommended to prevent vulvar cell contamination. And then the sediment material may be uh, actually may detach from the fixation and results in the false uh, negative results and the low-grade urothelial carcinomas may actually be distinguishable from those of the reactive uh, urothelial hyperplasia so body uh, cavity effusions um, these are cavity fluids that includes pleural fluid the ascytic or ab abdominal fluid we also have peritoneal washing and pericardial fluid and csf or your cerebrospinal fluid so this body cavity effusions class are uh, very important in the diagnosed uh, diagnosis of patients with a known history of cancer or sometimes a positive effusion for malignancy is the first presentation of cancer of an unknown origin. So for the collection and pr uh, preparation class for body cavity effusions, the specimens should be submitted fresh. Any preservatives should not be used or utilized and they must be refrigerated if uh, any, delay is, uh, any delay in the processing is anticipated. So the anticoagulants such as heparin may be used for cerebrospinal fluid uh, specimens uh, using 1 ml uh, as a minimum amount of hepar heparin when unnecessary. In next class, we have fine needle aspirate. 
This is actually a study of cellular samples that are obtained from organs that do not shed cells spontaneously, such as breast, also thyroid, what else? Lymph nodes, liver, lung, skins, um, what else of tissues, and bones. So uh, this uh, fine needle aspirate is primarily useful in lesions that are easily palpable like growth of the skin, the growth on the subcutaneous soft tissue tumors, thyroid, lymph nodes, salivary glands, and as well as breasts. So for the collection procedures, uh, use a 25 gauge needle and a 10 ml syringe. Insert the needle into the lesion and when a solid lesion is aspirated, usually a few drops of uh, of the uh, aspirate from the tip of the needle has the most diagnostic material for the cytologic evaluation or examination. On the other hand, class, when the specimen is bloody, the diagnostic cells are diluted and uh, it poses a difficulty or it is uh, hard to find on a direct smear. So uh, repeatedly, uh, redirect the needle to sample a number of areas while applying a small amount of suction on the syringe. And for tissues composed of mesenchymal cells or connective tissue cells that are tightly um, adhered to each other and do not exfoliate easily, a larger bore needle may be required and increased suction is uh, performed usually or uh, is necessary. So number five, the preparation of a maximum four slides is recommended and using one to two drops on each slide and using a, a light pull technique, which is similar to the technique used for the peripheral uh, blood smears. Number six, the sample should be air dried as quickly as possible to reduce the effects of shrinkage. And lastly, number seven, Rinse the needle in a preservative solution such as uh, humano fluid and send it to the uh, laboratory for uh, microscopic evaluation. It will be processed like any other body uh, effusion specimens at the cytology um, laboratory. Okay, a few pointers class to remember. Ideal aspirate should appear as a creamy consistency with numerous cells suspended in a small amount of tissue fluid without uh, admixture with blood and the fixative used is uh, actually based on the stain to be used and the colloid and mucin and smears to be stained with hematological stains such as your Megran wall gemsa stain should be um, air dried and the smears to be stained for by Papa Nicolau or Pops uh, stain or hematoxylin and eosin or HNE stain should be rapidly fixed in alcohol as uh, for the wet uh, fixation preparation. It is, is to show the nuclear details and allow the better identification of the malignant cells present on the sample. If the smears class are allowed to dry and not quickly fix in alcohol, the drying artifact can actually occur and the cytoplasm will be more eosinophilic and nuclear details will appear fuzzy. And lastly, class for transbronchial fine needle aspiration or FNA or your transbronchial fine needle aspiration samples or specimens, a drop or two drops should be released onto a slide uh, smeared by two slide pull method and fixed immediately. Okay, next we have a fine needle aspiration technique for palpable masses. So we have here the com most common sites of uh, palpable masses are found on the breast, uh, thyroid, soft tissues, as well as lymph nodes. So when there is an evident um, visible or tangible superficial masses that is found mainly on the breast or the thyroid and peripheral lymph nodes, this is usually done by the clinicians or in some centers by the pathologists themselves. The recommended needle has a 22 to 23 gauge and a small gauge needle is uh, uh, basically used to avoid bloody specimens. Next, we have uh, 
FNA techniques for non-palpable masses. These are performed under fluoroscopy, laparoscopy, and CT scan or your computerized tomography. Also, sonography for ultrasounds or any appropriate radiologic techniques. So, class, when there is a deplicated uh, lesion such as uh, located in the lung or the mediastinum, uh, abdominal organs such as liver, pancreas, and retroperitoneal organs such as your kidneys, adrenal glands, uh, what else? Lymph nodes are performed under fluoroscopy, laparoscopy, a CT scan, and sonography or any appropriate uh, radiologic techniques as I was uh, I have mentioned a while ago. So immediate, immediate slide fixation is the most crucial step in directly prepared smears. Uh, the fixative use is 95% alcohol or spray fixative and the staining technique is um, uh, usually or more frequently uh, Papa Nicolai staining and okay class uh, for the uh, final uh, pointer a fairly cellular smear cannot be diagnostic if it is air dried so it must be sprayed with 95% alcohol or a spray fixative. So that ends our uh, topic presentations on the um, cytologic uh, techniques. Once again, thank you and have a nice day.